All right, so today we're going to talk about flow, and you don't need to worry too much about what's going on here. I'm going to use FL Studio to try to illustrate the idea, um, and we'll go over a lot of these, uh, you know, buttons and such in a lot more uh, in depth. But right now, I just really want to use this to illustrate an idea. And flow, I think, is the most important thing in hip hop because it's kind of what makes it music. The analogy that I like to make is that rapping is to singing kind of what drums are to other musical instruments. So there's not necessarily a melody involved, but there is definitely a rhythm involved. And if you don't have the rhythm, then technically you're not making music. You're kind of doing spoken word over a beat, which is obviously rhythmic. And I, But I think it's very important that if you're a rapper that you have at least a fairly decent flow. So that's what I'm going to be covering in this you know tutorial here. So right now what we have is a kick right here and then we have a snare right here so I'm gonna click on play there's a little cursor on the bottom that goes through and it's set to a BPM of 95 BPM and uh, we'll cover it a little bit more in depth later but that's just the speed of it and so I'm gonna go ahead and click on play so you can hear what this sounds like but notice that every time that this cursor gets to one of these little um, lit up uh, buttons right here because I can light these up. I can you know turn them on or turn them off by left clicking or right clicking. Um, so they're already lit up, and um, so if I click on play, it'll go through and it'll play the kick when it gets here. It'll play a kick when it gets here. Then here it'll play a snare, and then it'll go kick, kick, snare. So you'll hear it. And I can go ahead and add uh, a bunch more, like I could uh, go through and just add a whole bunch like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a third instrument right here. And this is what it sounds like. And I'm going to let that be kind of uh, metaphorical for what your voice, you know, should be like. So if I, for example, wanted to fill um, every two steps, let's. Let's well, yeah, let me go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill every two steps and listen mainly to the 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 rim here. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and mute the kick and I'm going to mute the snare. So the only thing you can hear is the rim. And I want that again to remember that this is kind of um, metaphorical, kind of, you know, what you would emulate with your voice when you're rapping. So it's a very basic rhythm. It just goes one, 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 one. And if you were to actually convert that into words, it would be something like, I am Alan, I'm a rapper. So real quick, we can do a quick example. My town popping, your town rocking. So the idea that I'm trying to get across is that a rhythm is different than the words that you're saying, but rather you should come up with a rhythm first and then think of the words that fit that rhythm. So it's kind of like in math where you have X, which is called a variable. It could represent one. It could represent two. It could represent three. Um, whereas if you have a rhythm that goes da, 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 it could represent I'm a rapper or something like take the back way or one of a million different combinations of words. But you want to have words that fit that rhythm. I think a mistake that people make is that they confuse syllable count with rhythm, and that's not always the case. It, just because you have a 10-syllable line does not mean it's going to have the same rhythm as another 10-syllable line. For example, uh, the phrase civilization eliminated is 10 syllables. If I have the sentence, my mom bought us snacks and now we have food. You cannot possibly say my mom bought us snacks and now we have food as fast as you would say civilization eliminated without changing the natural way that you pronounce my mom bought us snacks and now we have food. Nobody would say my mom bought us snacks and now we have food. That's just not a way that we talk. And when you're rapping, it's definitely going to be reflective if you try to do that. Quick edit here with an example, you know, just from the sentence, I am Alan, I'm a rapper. The reason why that sounds more amateur is because... My name isn't Alan, it's Alan. And my and I'm not a rapper, I'm a rapper. So words already have a natural rhythm to them. And if you don't abide by that natural rhythm, people are going to notice and normally not in a good way. I'm going to go ahead and just play the snare here. And a good idea when you're first starting out is to rhyme on the snare. So, yeah, I'm fucking hot now. Got this shit on lockdown. Y'all are getting knocked out. Tell them all I got loud. But remember, when you have multis, you're rhyming phrases. So, for example, if we have the two-syllable multi, hot now, lock down, you can rhyme the snare right when you say hot and lock, or you can rhyme it when you say now and down. Neither one of those is right or wrong. They just 
you know, kind of have a different feel to them. Now, notice that there's a lot of ways that we can kind of approach this from a rhythmic standpoint. So let me go ahead and mute the snare. I have the kick muted. And the only thing I'm going to be hearing right now is the rim, which is, you know, again, reflective of your vocal. So notice that I can fill in any of these boxes, really. And technically, nothing is ever going to go off of rhythm. That's just kind of how the program works. It's programmed to keep it in a BPM of 95 BPM. So no matter how I approach this, there are a ton of different arrangements that I could do. I could, you know, leave this one here. This is technically a whole different arrangement than if I were to, you know, light this up. And really, the point is that there's a ton of different combinations that we could potentially use. I mean, we could take this one away, and we could take this one away, or we can add in rhythm here and rhythm here. So these are all like kind of reflective of syllables and words. Often what I'll do when I find a beat and I'm trying to come up with a flow or something, I'm normally just kind of rapping in gibberish. So it really doesn't matter what the words are. They don't need to mean anything. Rather, I'm coming up with a rhythm in my head that I think sounds good with the beat. So I could do something like, I'm on the back of the rack of the ball, the pack of the app of this, want the pack of the back of it. And it doesn't mean anything. It's all gibberish. But I can go back now after I've come up with the rhythm and find the words that fit that rhythm and then, you know, turn it into English. So when you're first starting out, every beat already has kind of a rhythm built into it because they've already put drums into it. So when you're very new to it and you're still trying to figure out how flow works, the, the training wheels, the easiest thing to do is really just to copy the rhythm that's already in the beat. For example, if I were to play this. I would just have a rhythm that's something like black to pack rap to ball pack tack rap to back pack. And again, go back and then put words, you know, actual words into that rhythm. At the very least, if you can copy the kick and the snare in the way that they're going rhythmically, then you're guaranteed to have a reasonable flow. But if you want to have a more complex flow, basically you just need to add in more syllables to your rhythm. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about double time at least a little bit, which is really just, you know, if I were to, you know, put nothing but these, I'm just filling all of them out. Let me go ahead and turn this back on so you can hear them. This would be kind of a double time flow. And again, going back to what I said about um, words like eliminated, some words just have a faster rhythm to them, and you're able to also kind of uh, pair them up quickly. For example, Eminem obviously does double time a lot, and you'll occasionally hear him, you know, put together words that literally don't make any sense. So he'll be rapping in gibberish, and he'll do something like dubba dubba teletubby. And those are words that can be said very quickly, naturally. As opposed to if you do like a tongue twister or something, probably wouldn't be the best idea if you're trying to do a double time rap. So really word selection is very important when you're trying to do really fast rapping. Now personally, I'm not a big fan of double time, but that is a very subjective thing. I'm not going to stop anybody from trying to do double time. But really, it's as simple as that. You, you just have like a really repetitive rhythm where you go It's really just a matter of just going syllable after syllable without much of a breath. I mean, breath control is something that you have to learn on your own and just, you know, practice and uh, exercise actually helps. Another thing I really wanted to point out, uh, let me go ahead and right click and cut this. This whole segment is the length of two bars, and that's because you have these snares here. And technically, I mean, if I wanted to make a beat and add snares in here, that's perfectly normal. It's not uh, unusual at all. But for the most part, beats normally always have a snare at this point. They might have more than that, but there's usually a snare right here. And in Western music, you have a rhythm of one and two and three and four. And the snare is always hitting when it gets to the two. So this would be one and two and three and four. And then it would wrap around again. So we're at one and two and three and four. So this is two bars. I'm going to go ahead and play it real quick. In hip hop, it definitely used to be very conventional to have a structure of 16 bars, meaning 16 lines. Then you would have a chorus that's eight bars, and then you would go back into your second verse, which would be 16 bars, then eight bars, and then 16 bars. Although these days, um, you know, there's a lot more ambiguity as far as how the structure is supposed to be. I normally listen to the beat and go with whatever I think makes sense. But often, verses will be around 16 bars, and choruses will only be around eight bars. And you might also have some extra bridges. If you don't know what a bridge is, a bridge is basically a part of a song that leads up to the chorus, but it's not part of the chorus itself. 
So the first example that comes to mind is Bye 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 by NSYNC. And so here you have a verse, and then here you have the bridge where he goes, I know I can't take it anymore. It ain't no lie. I want to see you out that door, baby. Bye Bye Bye. Um, this part right here is actually the chorus where it's uh, Don't Want to Be a Fool for You, Just Another Player in Your Game for Two. Um, this is all the chorus. Then they go back with another verse, but then notice here, this is the bridge again. So this is the same bridge as the one up here. Uh, but again, it leads up to the verse itself, but then they have the, uh, sorry, it leads up to the chorus itself, and then they have the verse in between. And a bridge is completely optional. Not every song has a bridge. I just want to make sure you know what they are. Normally, they would only be about four bars. They're shorter than the chorus itself, which is usually eight bars. But really, any rule as far as the overall structure of the song is very easy to break. There are, you know, some conventions that people abide by, but then you'll always find songs that are going out there and doing completely different things. So don't let any of that, you know, stop you from trying something different. So I'm just going to pull up a quick recording um, that I did of myself. And again, don't think too much about the lyrics here. These, this is about the rhythm. I've recorded myself, and you'll see right here, this is the beat, and there's this little uh, peak right here, and that means that the snare is uh, happening right here. There's also a snare happening right here, a snare happening right here. So I recorded vocals, and my vocals are landing at the same sp uh, spot as the snare, which would be the same thing as me putting this rim right here, where I'm only um, you know, making a vocal right when the snare happens. So here I do this for two bars. So this is one bar right here. Then this is the second bar. Then I switch it up and then I add in one more syllable. So this is actually the first kick. So again, in an analogy, I would put this uh, right here and then I would put another one right here. Um, this is a different drum line than the one you're going to hear in the beat. But the general idea is that I have one word or one piece of the rhythm right here, one right, right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. And then I just continue to add on a couple more. So I really just want you to hear this and really think about the rhythm. Think about, um, there's one part right about here. Hopefully you'll hear it. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I highlighted the correct area, but it might be like right here. But I literally just emulate the drums 100%. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not adding in any more syllables. I'm just copying the drums with my voice. So I'll just go ahead and play this and let you hear what it sounds like. And that's a bunch of different rhythms and there are you know probably at least uh you know a hundred different ways i could have you know changed up the syllable count to have a slightly different rhythm i just wanted to give you the idea of flow and rhythm which is really just making a, a beat with your voice you know just to having the rhythm that drums would have one thing I want to point out is if you have a lot of multis and you have a lot of internal rhymes, which we'll talk about next video, um, it will definitely help your flow. The more rhyming you have, usually, not always, but usually, the um, better your flow sounds. As with anything, I think you should go out there, listen to artists that can, are considered having a really good flow. So I compiled a little bit of a list here. This is not a comprehensive list. For example, Eminem has a good flow, J. Cole, plenty of other rappers that I'm not going to include here. But these are some of my favorites, um, and I just wanted to point them out. Because if you go and listen to them, I think they'll give you a good idea of you know where to start or a framework to start with. Um, so Nas and AZ um, kind of have similar styles to each other. Go back and listen to Illmatic, which is Nas's album, but AZ, in my opinion, had the best verse on the whole album. That's an old boom bap style, so the beat rhythm is a little bit different. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we make beats, but for now, just uh, definitely go check that out. Listen to how the beat sounds and how they rap on top of it. Big Pun, arguably, I think, maybe the best flow in hip-hop of all time. He raps really fast, but he doesn't rap like uh, double time like Eminem and uh, Twista or even Busta Rhymes sometimes. He, uh, he just raps really fast. He includes a lot and a lot of multis. 
And if you just go back and listen to his flow, you can hear just how incredible it is. It's just, it's very fast, very fluent. He's never off rhythm ever. Definitely go back and listen to his album, Capital Punishment, I think was better than his other album. Joyner Lucas is another great one. He also raps pretty fast, but he does do double time uh, quite a bit. Hobson, also pretty good, does not... Uh, well, he might do some double time, but uh, still kind of just a regular quick rapper. Drake has kind of a swaggy flow um, and something you should definitely go out and listen to. My favorite album from Drake is, um, if you're hearing this now, it's too late. His flow on pretty much all those tracks is incredible. Royce to 5'9", includes all kinds of internal, uh, so does Elzai. Both of these guys have all kinds of um, crazy internal rhyme schemes, and we'll talk about that more. I'm going to actually highlight some of their verses, but uh, Royce is my favorite rapper of all time. Uh, he has been for quite a while now, probably since like 2008, and I've been just a major stan of his work. Elzai is also incredible. He doesn't get the uh, acknowledgement that he deserves. Biggie is the weirdest one on this list, I think, because he has like a swaggy flow and also he does not have nearly as many multis as pretty much everybody on this list has a lot of multis. Biggie just kind of had really simple rhymes, but he had such a intricate rhyme scheme that it just went from line to line and it was so smooth and it was something very unique. I don't think I've ever heard any other rapper really capture what he does. You might have, you know, a similar voice to him, but you can't, you know, copy what he did as far as the flow was concerned. And then Busta Rhymes also has a great flow, uh, does do a lot of double time. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of relying on double time. I think it's kind of a crutch. But, you know, that's my subjective opinion. Does not really matter. If you want to be the best double time rapper there is, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I know a lot of people like it. There are a lot of fans of that style. And that's about everything I wanted to cover, I think, on flow. Um, but just know that having more multis, having, um, you know, different internal rhyme schemes, the more you rhyme throughout your verse, even though you have this rhythm going on, um, the better it kind of sounds and, and it kind of just has a better flow to it. So we'll talk about internal rhyme schemes in a future video. Keep this video in mind when we talk about that because you'll always want to have rhythm no matter what. It is very important. I think, you know, the thing that makes hip hop music is the fact that it is rhythmic. If you don't have, you know, rhythm, if you don't have flow, then I don't think you're really making music per se. So hopefully you learned something in this video and we will move on to the next one. Thank you for tuning in.